Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23. It is round 18 of our Moto3 Championship. It is time for the Zapang International Circuit on Malaysia. So here we go then guys, from the back of the grid here in Sepang, I'm hoping for a good start and we're going to need it because we are going to be so far behind and at this point we'll be losing the championship lead so we must finish in within the top 10, the top 5, whatever it may be to make sure we ascertain as many points as we possibly can. So now on to the brakes we go. Ooh, I'm trying to take as many rides as I possibly can going into turn 1. We have attained a couple of positions but... Is it enough to go into the top 13? It isn't. So at the, at the moment, we will reclaim the championship lead by just a single championship point. But getting our elbows out with Farioli and now with Ivan Ortola to the left-hand side, we should be about to gain more points. I know the AI do break quite early in this circuit, even on the hardest difficulty. So we should be able to fight back against the AI. A bit of contact with Joel Kelso on the CMF Moto. But we are now in a good position, so into turn five. We're already up there to ninth place. Oh, <laughs> goodness me, the contact made there from Kelso. Now, the last time I did a video here in Sepang would have been in the Moto3 debut season. And that was also in uh, in a Honda, but unfortunately we had a difficulty in that one as well regarding the wet weather conditions. But AI at the minute giving me a lot of hard work to try and beat our, uh, our biggest championship rival in the form of Daniel Oh, Gardo, going as late as I possibly can on the brakes here. Can we get it stopped? Oh, Artigas. I know there's not a lot of love between us two in this championship, but I guess our rival is just going to go even worse now. That was a late, late move, but I, I had to go for it because I know how slow they are in that corner, and if I were to go as slow as they do, it's going to really hold me up, and I'm not going to survive a chance of getting attacking Daniel Holgaard. Look at the speed we got into that left-hand side there. So already within 13 corners... We're up into the top five. What a start against the difficult AI. Brilliant performance. And I don't know why this is, because in the practice and in the qualifying, they were unbeatable. Two seconds, three seconds, everything was quicker. They were doing two minute twelves in the qualifying. I, I didn't stand a chance. So unfortunately, I did end up skipping the qualifying after seeing how difficult they were. I just thought I'd save it all for the race. Going around the outside of Marrera, and now we're up into the top four. Every single point matters from this point onwards. We have two more rounds after this one to decide this Moto3 World Championship. That is ultimate pressure right now. But where we stand in fourth with Halgado slipping to third, that would be 21 points as we go. Wow. Halgado was really gentle upon the brakes there. I was almost bumping into him. And speaking of bumping into him, the bumping into Moreras and trying over the tight apex a little bit too tight this time around. Didn't quite work out to our favour, but it's, uh, it's okay. Don't be, uh, don't be too concerned with the small amount of contact. We are now leading the championship by 19 points, so this feels a little bit better. With two more rounds and 50 points available, we have a great advantage as we go into turn four. Very tight to the apex of the fourth corner. Marrera is still holding on to the position. I do find this middle sector, sector two onwards, I'm not particularly strong. But from sector three going into four, I do feel like we can really pick up the speed and also take advantage of the AI's poor braking. So with lots of laps in this one, I do feel we've got a great opportunity to get back into the podium position. So Elgardo's not that far behind, is he? He's only, a, what, maybe a second? Two and a half it is to Tatsuki Suzuki. He's having a wonderful race. He's actually really having a, a good end to the season, isn't he? Quite a strong performance since, uh, since he took me out in Mategi, I would say. We're back ahead of Marrera. Must avoid the wheelie going onto the acceleration there going into turn 10. It can be a bit a bit sketchy that on the Moto 3 bikes. It doesn't feel like you are going to wheelie, but when you bring on the power, it suddenly starts to lift. Beautiful apex going into turn 11 there. Holgado, he's going to have to be careful here. He might end up losing the position, and you know what? Oh, <laughs> Trying to take that inside line, but almost contact. Well, there was a small amount, but it wasn't enough to do any damage. Went into the tightest apex of the Sunway Lagoon for turn 14. We are now in the slipstream of Olgado. Now, it's, it seems a bit odd, this track, because I'm able to run the third power setting for the majority of the race. I might even be able to run it all. I guess we'll find out. But look how early Olgado goes on the brakes. That's ridiculous. That th completely threw me off, by the way. I made that mistake going into the left-hand side, but we have now claimed the position, and we're going to be gaining three extra points on our championship lead. This all adds up. Points make prizes, ladies and gentlemen. But look at that lap time from Suzuki. That is a 2 minute 13, 2-3-4 on 
the second lap of the Grand Prix. That was 1.3 seconds quicker than I was. Doesn't look like it. We were able to close in a couple of tenths, but apparently he's done a 2 minute 13, which is a good lap. And I did a 2 minute 13 in the qualifying before I decided just to end the session. And that wasn't good enough for, well, any position. It was dead last. So that's how competitive the AI were. 2 minute 13, 5, I think I set. Onto the brakes we go again. Jamamassi seems to be slowing down somewhat. Bit deep into turn four. We're gaining a second. Already a second has been gained on Holgado. This is not good for his championship challenge. Falling behind by any tenth of a second at this point. It's costly. Massively costly for the number 96. So no sunshine for Holgado here in Sepang. I guess we're going to be taking all of the limelight as we downshift a bit too prematurely there as a matter of fact. Elgardo, 1.2 seconds behind, but at the front, 2.5, it is to Suzuki. I'm going to try and break as late as we possibly can now going into this left-hander. You can go quite late by uh, pulling the anchors. Jamamassi at the air. That gap has been cut down by five tenths of a second just by breaking at the optimal time. Into the right-hand side will go nice and tight to the apex again. The gap is back up to 2.3. I, 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 wow, I think Suzuki... He might be impossible in this one. He is just riding unbelievably well. Like his career depended on it. Awesome stuff for the Japanese rider. Probably should have gone too... Uh, ah, too tight. I should have gone for the wider apex there, but I just got caught up in the moment. Admiring the Leopard Hondas getting away, and we, we really need that slipstream to catch up to these two. They've been like this for the latter half of the season. So, so strong. Every other race finishing either first or second or within the points so the top five let's say and then sometimes they're being a little bit inconsistent but the majority of the season and definitely this last part they have been very very strong across the line will there be an improvement by anyone there will be an improvement for us it's a two minute 13 eight six nine and that's uh, quite impressive considering the minor faux pas we made into the right hander just earlier on and onto the brakes again going into turn one downshifting all the way down the gears to first Back into the left-hand side. We must avoid clipping the apex there. That's beautifully done. And we are closing in. Of course, as I've mentioned many times before, points are off here, and big points are to be made. We can get ourselves an extra, what, five? No, four points. Four points if we manage to finish in second. That's massive. That would put our championship lead to 31. That's huge going into Qatar. Yeah, we need to get Massey here, and he doesn't seem to be as strong as Suzuki. I don't see why we can't. We've got a bit of a fast-paced chess match going on here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to close in as much as I can. Pushing hard. Don't get me wrong. This is not me riding within myself. I'm, I'm, I'm playing hard here. I'm pushing. I'm really trying to catch up to these two. These lap times are not what I'm accustomed to here in Sepang. As I say, in the qualifying, it was more or less 2 minute 14s, high 2 minute 13s. But this one looks, again, to be another solid lap. We, oh, Massey is going way too slow there. Look how tight we were the apex to uh, turn nine. And now back into the right-hand side. Jamma Massia, prepare to give up your second position. Uh, <laughs> I can't speak second place. For us, it's coming. We are going to attack the number five, and we are going to claim that second spot. So into the left-hand side. Oh, I must be careful going on that rumble strip. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. But thankfully, the curbs in MotoGP 23 are relatively fair. But into the right hand side, I've done it again, that's too tight, I'm trying to go for the inside line, but ah, that has cost us such a massive amount of time. That might have just made Suzuki too out of reach now, 3.3 seconds. Ooh, that's a lot of time to gain, I don't think it's going to happen, but Massey are going like a snail's pace into turn 15, <laughs> have a bit of bumps. Wow, oh the crowd loved it, listen to the cheers from the crowd. As they see Jamma Massey get punted, the man who just announced he will be going up to Moto2 in the SAG team. He's uh, getting a bit battered and bruised here in Sepang. But onto the brakes, this is where I'm certain we will be going later than Jamma Massey. In fact, include Suzuki in that as well, because I don't think he's as braking as late as we do. The last of the late breakers on the Moto3 machines as it stands. Beautiful tight apex again. Quick change to the direction. And we are looking very promising. Jamma Massey is not... Within striking range. Now, this has been a very peculiar Moto3 race. It's been a long time since a rider has been this strong. And it's been a while since, really, 
we've had to really push to this point where we have to just catch up to one position. Because usually in the Moto3 races it's so bunched, so if you catch up by one position, you're effectively catching up by three or four. And one overtake could net you a lot of points. But in, in our favour, Holgado is not being competitive here in Sepang. And Suzuki is, and he's not really a championship threat at this stage of the, of the uh, championship. Early on in the year, he looked promising. Oh, a bit deep. It's all right. And there is the championship standing, ladies and gentlemen. We will be, as you can see, 31 points adrift from Daniel Holgado and Massio and Suzuki. Yeah, they're miles off. They can't be catching us now. It's a... Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh. Brakes a little bit too firm on the rear brake there. <laughs> oh, wow. That Honda felt like it was going to go. It, it felt like it was going. I have to be so careful. That's exactly the same way I crashed into uh, into the Indonesia Grand Prix. No, apologies there. Uh, the Thailand Grand Prix. That was a, a difficult GP. Very, very difficult. Uh, in the Chang International Circuit, I was breaking quite firm into the third corner. And yeah, I made a big mistake. I actually took out Suzuki in that one. So that makes you think, if, if he hadn't been taken out that one and he won, he could be right in the thick of this for the championship. But what a great resurgence it's been anyway for Tatsuki-san. Just caught a, glan uh, a glimpse in the bottom right corner of your screen there. Notice our fuel is depleting ever so gently. We may have to drop down to power setting too, but I'm not going to give up yet. I know three seconds is a monumental task, but let's just keep chipping away at it. If they continue to break that early, I still think we can do it. And considering we made a big mistake into the left-hand side, I think it's called Kila or Clear. Turn 7. Might be turn 8. I can't remember. I will see it on this next lap, of course. And uh, We had a big mistake there, and yet we still didn't lose a significant amount of time. And of course, guys, there goes the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, of course, if you are enjoying the content. And, of course, if you're ready for Ride 5, which is right around the corner, I definitely suggest you hit that subscribe button, because I've got a lot of content already done, ready for the big day. So now into the right for turn 4. Nice and tight. Beautifully done for the fourth corner here in Sepang. Suzuki still leading the way by a very comfortable 2.2 seconds, but to my calculations, that's an 8 tenths of a second improvement already on this lap, but look where the AI just, yeah, so strong. Any point where it's a fast flowing corner, that's where they just are far superior than the player. They don't have to contend with the bike accelerations and gyroscopic feel of lifting the bike up neutral. No, they don't have to contend with that. We do, and that's why it makes things a little bit difficult for us every now and again. But anyway, into the left-hand side. It is clear. Turn 9 is the corner I was trying to get right. K-L-I-A for that corner, turn 9. But now into the right-hand side for turn 11. Ooh, I might have missed... Oh, no, it's all right. Sometimes if you touch the apex in that corner, it's, it's an instant crash. But I was, all, I was able to keep my head above water and uh, make sure we nailed the corner. Quick change of direction. I do love how this track just flows so nicely. Still breaking a bit too early and a bit too tight to the Apex of 14. That's definitely somewhere where I know I can improve. Maybe we'll try that with the next couple of laps, but it's a big ask at this stage of the Grand Prix. Two tenths of a second we will be improving our lap time by, depending if we do get the final corner done correctly. Hard on the brakes, dying easy boot touching the left side of the floor. Now to the left-hand side, bring it in tight. Be careful on the acceleration here, because you can wheelie. <laughs> Look at that for timing. Absolutely perfect timing. Across the line, we have taken 7 tenths of a second. A 2 minute 13, 701. A deviation of around 4 tenths in the previous 3 laps. At uh, 4 laps, apologies. Make that 4. We're on it here. This is, this is where it matters the most, but honestly, it doesn't matter. We don't need to... Oh, it's tight. We don't really need to be pushing this hard to catch up to Suzuki. But I just feel like I'd be doing you guys a disservice if I didn't really push and making that mistake to turn two there. That's cost us around three tenths of a second. Now the issue is not necessarily the individual few tenths. It's what it will add up to because we're already running out of time here. And if we could get three or four tenths quicker and closer... If we just get a little bit of slipstream, that's going to help us out massively to potentially beat Suzuki for 2.5 at this stage of the lap. It's a big ass, guys and gals. It really is, but I'm just going to keep on pushing. As I say, if I don't push and I just start riding within myself and taking it steady, I'm not doing myself a favour and I'm doing you guys a disservice. So, let's keep on pushing. 
Let's see what we can produce. Lots of laps still in this one to attack here, so... Keep, stay with me, boys and girls. Stay with me. We might have a chance here. 2.4 seconds it is. Quite slow coming out the acceleration. I, I looked at the, the differences between the packages, and I noticed our acceleration for the, uh, for the 658 Squadra Corsa Honda was significantly less than the Leopard Honda. And I think that's where we lose a lot of time. The acceleration coming out the corners, it's just not on our side. Could we get it at least under two seconds? That's really tight, trying to gradually glide it in, but I don't know where Suzuki's finding all that time in the latter stage of this lap. Let's just keep on pushing, but wow, 2.7. We've actually lost time. Let, let's see what it's like on the brakes, though, because if we get the brakes right, I think that's where we get a better indication of how much time we can gain in on the Japanese rider. To the left-hand side, we'll bring on the power, 2.4, 2.3. We didn't gain any time there. I think Suzuki's responded. Yeah, we we actually improved our lap time there, but we didn't gain a single tenth compared to Tatsuki-san. Again, though, I, what an effort. Great try to keep pushing. 1.9, okay, that's a good sign, but in two laps, we'd need to be, two, we'd need to be a second quicker per lap, and I don't think that's going to happen against the difficult AI. It's We're up by three tenths in that first split, but it's a bit... A bit misleading because, of course, that previous best, we did make that mistake in turn two. But look at the AI, as in the other AI. Jamma Massey is seven seconds behind. You can see on the map on your left hand side of your, left -hand side of your screen there, the gap from Massey is massive. And the gap from there to Halgado is big as well. Suzuki and me are on another level right now. This is the pinnacle of Moto3 in the Dr. Race Moto3 Championship, by far. Two riders are at absolute top of their game. I'm trying everything now. Even cutting a few rumble strips to try and cut down on the advantage. But he's so fast! He's so fast! It's 2.6 now! And yet I'm on a lap that could potentially be improving by two, sec uh, two tenths of a second. I can't do it. I'm not going to stop though, we'll just keep seeing what lap times we can get, but wow. He has really pushed me in this one. I don't know whether we need to drop down to power setting 2, I have been managing that every, every now and again, but it's still really close. Not close enough though. 2.1, 2.2, will the gap in, improve, uh, increase to about 2.7 by the edge of this corner? It's up to two and a half, yeah. I mean, I can't get it w even within two seconds here. We were on a great lap there, but unfortunately, I think I think that's it. I can't beat him. <laughs> He's on another level. Just don't say Dr. Ace doesn't try. I mean, I really did. I always do. Well, ah, <laughs> it's still 2.3, 2.2. Ah, goodness me. Well, there it is again on the screen, ladies and gentlemen championship standings, the rider standings of this current position. If the race were to end right now, we'd have a 31 point lead on Holgado. And unfortunately, I'm not very good at maths, but I think it was a 64 point lead ahead of Masia and Suzuki. Didn't really get a chance to work it out, but yeah, there you go. My maths isn't really that great, so it was a good effort. Oh, the gap's down to less than two seconds. And we're still on it, we're still on it here. I'm down to power setting two, because I need to save a bit of fuel. And yet, we're flying on this one already. Four tenths of a second. I should have dropped down to power setting two earlier. What's going on? How are we able to pull in this gap? 1.8. I mean, it, yeah, it's still a whole second. If it was eight tenths, oh god, I would be absolutely gunning it now. Maybe making a lot of mistakes as well because the nerves would take over, but... Wow. We're on a good lap here. Maybe I should have considered using power setting two a bit more often throughout this Grand Prix, but what said is done. What is done is said, <laughs> if that makes any sense. It's all done and dusted. We just need to finish this lap. But we, we need to take um, the focus on the best part, and that is a 31-point championship lead going into Qatar. Lusail International Circuit of Qatar is a circuit I love. I think we could wrap up the championship there. All we would need is a few points. We just need to stay ahead of Algarda, really. Just don't lose six points. And that's the championship. We'll see if it's that simple when the video comes out. But as I say, a lot of Ride 5 video coming out next week. So definitely get subscribed and definitely 
let me know if you're going to get the game, but into the right-hand side. Tight as you like, but unfortunately, it is a second place. What an effort. I gave it everything. Fair play to Suzuki. Be able to fight back against the AI. A bit of contact with Joel Kelso on the CMF Moto. But we are now in a good position. So into turn five. We're already up there to ninth place. Oh, <laughs> goodness me, the contact made there from Kelso. Now, the last time I did a video here in Sepang would have been in the Moto3 debut season. And that was also in uh, in a Honda. But unfortunately, we had a difficulty in that one as well regarding the wet weather conditions. But AI at the minute giving me a lot of hard work try and beat our uh, our biggest championship rival in the form of Daniel Holgado going as late as I possibly can in the brakes here can we get it stopped oh Artigas I know there's not a lot of love between us two in this championship but I guess our rival is just going to go even worse now that was a late late move but I, I had to go for it because I know how slow they are in that corner and if I were to go as slow as they do it's going to really hold me up and I'm not going to survive a chance of getting attacking Daniel Holgard. Look at the speed we got into that left hand side there. So already within 13 corners we're up into the top five. What a start against the difficult AI. Brilliant performance and I don't know why this is because in the practice and the qualifying they were unbeatable. Two seconds, three seconds, everything was quicker. They were doing two minute twelves in the qualifying. I, I didn't stand a chance. So unfortunately I did end up skipping the qualifying after seeing how difficult they were. I just thought I'd save it all for the race. Going around the outside of Marrera and now we're up into the top four. Every single point matters from